Hi, I'm Derek Yu, and I am the sole member of Mossmouth. And uh, you're here at Day of the Devs, the GDC, showing off Splunky too, right? Yeah, that's right. So how does it feel to get uh, the game in the uh, players' hands again? Oh, it's great, yeah. Um, there have been a lot of like old Splunky fans coming back and playing, and thankfully they're not having too easy a time with the demo. You know, the, the thing I was worried about was that people would come in and being really good at Splunky 1, they would just breeze through the demo, and that has not been the case, so that's great. And uh, yeah, everyone's been having a great time, it seems like. You know, your game's known for its, like, secretive and kind of hidden stuff. Uh, have you seen anyone discover things that you thought they would be able to find today? In the demo, you know, we tried to keep it fairly light. I'm trying to keep, you know, the real secrets close to my chest. Um, so, no, I haven't seen anyone. I mean, there are always, like, cool situations that, that you just never see uh, because of the random nature of the game and the way everything interacts with everything else. And so I've seen some cool, just some just wacky like scenarios where, uh, like last night at the Alamo Draft House, I had a couple friends playing Splunky 2 up on stage, and they each found a turkey and they were both writing turkeys, and just watching them like play together writing these turkeys was was awesome. And then they they found an altar uh, later on while they were still writing turkeys, and they decided to sacrifice their turkeys, and that was just. I mean, obviously they would, but you know, when I play, I don't, I don't do that. I try to keep my turkeys alive, and uh, you know, I, I feel more like nurturing, I guess, toward them than, than they did. Obviously, they're trying to play, I think, very pragmatically. I think you're highlighting what's cool about your games is that uh, you'll, you'll create something, you'll create a set of rules in an environment, uh, but then emergent gameplay appears, and that's a perfect example of emergent gameplay, right? Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I guess while we're talking about turkeys, I saw someone else who they, t just today, they found an idol and they, they got it and it triggered a trap. And it's a new trap where a giant wooden log just comes down and like crushes through many layers of the floor. And then that wooden log trapped them in this tiny little alcove. And they, um, they used a bomb to break free. And then there was a turkey on the other side and they got it on the turkey. And then they jumped into a pit and they didn't see an arrow trap. And the arrow trap shot out and hit the turkey. But when you're on a turkey, it, it actually protects you. So it will soak up the damage from the arrow trap. So it's kind of like Yoshi. It's similar, yeah. And then, um, and then the turkey fell into a spike trap. But the player survived and they were able to jump off the turkey and, and land safely on the ground up above. And so yeah, it was just a cool sequence of sequence of events, and you know, it's just I never see things like exactly like that while I'm testing, and so it's really fun to watch people play here and do things like that. So you know, this is the second game in the series. What have you learned from the first, uh, maybe mistakes you made or whatever uh, things that you ran into while developing the first Blunky that you uh, brought and maybe made changes to or uh, updated your design philosophy for the second game? I think the first game feels really complete to me. Like, I don't feel like I made any mistakes with it, per se. Like, to me, that was a complete package, and it just didn't feel like there's anything that I wanted to add to that. But with Splunky 2 getting to start from scratch, I think there's a lot that, that I, I want to do. And, you know, there are a lot of new features, like having that back layer that you can go into in each level where you know, behind what you see normally, like in, you know, like in Spelunky 1, um, you, you just have the normal level and it's sort of like a flat plane. In Spelunky 2, there's hidden things going on kind of behind the back wall, right? And that, that adds like a third dimension to the game. And that also creates a lot of new scenarios that we can, we can play around with in terms of the level design. So the, the level design in Spelunky 2 in a lot of ways feels like it's three-dimensional because you can go back there and you can find hidden shortcuts and it you know it just creates a lot of new uh, it just creates a lot of new things that we can do especially with the other like new features um, in in this day of the devs build there's actually some a new character that we're introducing uh, not a character that you can play as but a character that you can interact with during a run 
who's sort of like the shopkeeper, um, but he doesn't run a shop. Yeah, you, you can hear people yelling about the game back there. Uh, but it, it, it's a character who's who's actually related to one of the characters from Spelunky One, and you can interact with him. And you know, there are things that that he will ask you if you want to do, if you want to help him out, and you can choose to. Um, if you want or not, just like the, the shopkeeper, you can choose to ignore him, you can choose to help him, you can choose to, you know, hurt him if you want. And I think uh, what we want to do is introduce characters like that to make the world feel more rich, but to also add, like, things that you can do that will create consequences that last throughout the run, not just in that level. So I think people really like the shopkeeper because, you know, if you rob the shopkeeper, He'll get angry, and that affects the rest of your run. And so we want to have things like that. We want to give the player more choices. You know, there are going to be just a lot more different ways that you can kind of customize your your path through the game. And there will be more things that have long-lasting consequences within each run. Um, it's really important in Spelunky that after you die, you know, things get reset. But within each run, I think the stories that players are going to have are going to be a lot more rich. It's going to feel a lot more dynamic with the back layer and the new enemies and traps and like the liquid physics and things like that. So overall, the world should just feel much more rich and reactive to the player. Cool. You know, and I was kind of curious about the inspiration for the series and, and, the, and the second game. Do you watch speedruns or like other games that may be... Uh, like, what are the other games that influence you? Or do you maybe watch, like, streams for influence also? Yeah, I watch a lot of Twitch now. Like, while I'm working, it's just kind of on in the background. So I I see a lot of games. Um, you know, one of my favorite games that has just been a big inspiration to me and a lot of developers is Dark Souls. And that was a game that, that people told me about after Spelunky came out because they actually felt that there were some sort of philosophical similarities between the two games, even though the genres are completely different, and that's a, a third-person action game, and it's medieval fantasy and things like that. I think there are some similar philosophies as far as giving the player a lot of freedom and having their choices create a lot of consequences. And, uh, yeah, so after I, I played the game... Um, I just I fell in love with it and I did see some some like philosophical similarities. And I think that's one of the reasons why I loved it so much is you know they're trying to make the type of game that I am really interested in myself. And I would say in you know as far as Spelunky 2 goes, I, I was inspired by the way Dark Souls actually tells its story and how it creates a, a rich and vibrant world without, you know, having like a lot of cutscenes and a lot of, you know, there's there's not a lot of dialogue, right? Like they give you a lot of snippets just through, you know, short short uh, conversations that you have with with characters and just through the lore that you read about, you know, in the item descriptions and things like that. So I was very influenced and inspired by how they created this extremely vibrant world without just a lot of exposition you know and I think that that works really well with Spelunky where I don't want to I don't want to mess with the flow of Spelunky you know it is meant to be an arcade game and like a run should take about an, an hour you know on average if you're just sort of playing casually and but I do want the player to feel like there is a living, breathing world here. And I, I, you know, I saw like with the shopkeeper, how just having the shopkeeper kind of like reappear as a reoccurring character and having the shopkeeper get angry at you, uh, you know, throughout a run, how that created a narrative for people. And, you know, people, a lot of people wondered like, you know, who is the shopkeeper? Why does it seem like there are multiple shopkeepers? You know, they, they asked a lot of questions and created a lot of narr narrative for themselves. And yeah, so that, that's something that From Software, I think, with their, you know, Dark Souls and Bloodborne games, I think have done really well, and I've been really inspired by. Uh, so, 
do you have a release date for the game and uh, any platforms that you're shooting to release on? So right now, we're hoping to release this year, and our targeted platforms are Steam and PS4 for now. So no Switch? That's all I'm saying for now. Okay, okay. I just, yeah, I just, I just don't want to, you know, get people hyped until... It just seems, it just seems like the game would be mighty fine on a handheld device maybe made by Nintendo. I, I have lots of love for Nintendo and the Switch. Awesome. That's all I'm going to say for now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.